Once a thriving community of Jews, the small town of Dachau had become a place of unimaginable horror. In the heart of Nazi Germany, the concentration camp that bore the same name was a place of death and despair. For Jacob, a Jewish man who had been imprisoned in Dachau for two years, the prospect of freedom seemed impossible. But Jacob refused to give up hope. He spent his days planning and scheming, observing the guards, and looking for weaknesses in the camp's defenses. And one day, he saw his opportunity. It was a moonless night when Jacob slipped out of his barracks and made his way to the perimeter fence. With hands that shook from fear and anticipation, he used a makeshift tool to cut through the barbed wire and slip out into the darkness. Jacob knew that his escape would not go unnoticed for long. He ran through the night, heading towards the nearby forest where he had heard rumors of resistance fighters waging guerrilla war against the Nazis. The journey was long and treacherous, but Jacob was determined to find freedom and to make the Nazis pay for what they had done. When Jacob finally arrived in the forest, he wandered for days until he was met by a group of hardened resistance fighters. They were skeptical of him at first, but when Jacob told them his story and revealed the tattooed number on his arm, they knew he was one of them. For months, Jacob fought alongside his comrades, sabotaging Nazi supply lines and attacking patrols whenever they could. It was a dangerous and grueling life, but for Jacob, it was the only way to fight back against the evil that had destroyed his family and his community. In April 1945, Jacob, while on a scouting mission, came upon a group of American soldiers. They traded food and stories, and the Americans knew of Dachau concentration camp, but Jacob's first-hand insight gave vital information into the layout and workings of the camp. Jacob returned to his group, explaining what the Americans had said, telling his fellow fighters to prepare for an American assault into the camp any day. To assist where they can and hunt the guards who flee, let the Americans push into the camp. The day finally came, and the Americans mounted a full invasion onto the town and camp. Most of the Nazis fled days before, and the ones that stayed either surrendered or chose to end themselves before the Americans could. Jacob walked out of the forest that day and back into the gates of the camp. He wept as Jewish prisoners walked past him into freedom once again. Jacob's bravery and determination inspired those around him. Even when the odds seemed insurmountable, he never gave up. And eventually, his actions helped to turn the tide of the war. The Nazis were pushed out of the region, and the Jews of the camp were free to find life again. Jacob stayed the town of Dachau, which was now in ruins. The concentration camp had been liberated, but the town was still scarred by the atrocities that had taken place there. Jacob knew that he could never forget what he had seen and experienced, but he also knew that he could not let the past consume him. Instead, Jacob threw himself into the work of rebuilding. He worked tirelessly to help other survivors of the Holocaust, organizing support networks and lobbying governments for justice. And he never forgot the lessons he had learned in the forest, fighting alongside the guerrilla fighters who had become his family. Years went by, and Jacob grew old. But he remained committed to the cause of justice and the fight against fascism. He spoke out against bigotry and hatred wherever he saw it, and he worked tirelessly to ensure that the horrors of the Holocaust would never be forgotten. When Jacob died, he was mourned by many. But his legacy lived on. His bravery and determination had inspired others to stand up against injustice and to fight for a better world. And even though he was gone, Jacob's spirit lived on, a beacon of hope in a world that sometimes seemed dark and cruel.